All right, I have my vector line art as an EPS on the desktop, but I do not want to open that in Photoshop because that will force me, I'll show you, it will force me to rasterize it. As soon as I put in anything there, it will turn my, my vector into a raster file, which is not what I want. I just went through a lot of trouble to make it a, a vector file. So instead, I open up Photoshop. I say File New. You want to give yourself a lot of space for the digital coloring and a lot of resolution for your line art. So I am going to not do our usual 8x10x350. By by Instead, I am going to do 14x11x350. By by like we did for our landscape. This is actually my favorite default size because in this lab, that allows us to print up to 16 by 20 inches at 240 resolution, which is still a good print quality, even though it's a little sub-professional. And it, of course, allows us to print 8 by 10 or anything below 1114. Now, the beauty is, it doesn't matter what resolution I put. If I bring in my vector line work EPS and drag and drop it from the desktop and then size it and place it, on my 11 by 14 by 350 pixel per inch, it comes in as a smart layer, which means I can't accidentally change it without, without rasterizing it first. And I do not want to rasterize it. And so now it's no longer looking like a vector, but it is a vector, which means no matter what size I scale it to, it will re-rasterize to that resolution, which is really, really handy. So I did 11 inches tall because mine is kind of more of a horizontal illustration by 14 inches wide. Now I'm going to lock my vector layer because I don't want to accidentally rasterize it. Right? Now let's turn it off. The key to digital coloring and to later digital painting is understanding how to use layers appropriately. So the first step is what's called flatting, F-L-A-T-T-I-N-G. And so if you Google flatting, you will see it. It's an industry term for exactly this step of digital coloring. And what it is, is you take the line art, and then behind it, you put a local flat color behind each different object that has a different color in the line art. Once you've flatted it, it looks like this. This line art's pretty, you know, nicely defined. So that looks pretty good. But once it's flatted, then it's really easy to select each of those colors and to do a tone them, augment them, play with them to get a more finished result. Now, you, we are going to be coloring our own work. So we'll probably approach it like this, where our flats are actually colors we think we might use. But that doesn't mean we might not change our mind later. Like they changed their mind from purple here to yellows and just use the purple as, as a highlight. Um, traditionally, if you are flatting as a professional, you pick the craziest colors you can, kind of like this. So even if they don't relate exactly, it makes them easy to select. So if you're a professional flatter for someone else, you're just setting up the file so that they can easily mess with the colors behind each thing. So there'll be a lot of neon colors as long as they're all independent of each other and easily selectable. So flatting is an interesting example. So this is a good example of that. This is the end product, but to flat it, they didn't use colors that were too close. They just use colors to be able to really clearly select what they wanted to uh, alter later. So on and on, all kinds of different approaches. And it's a, a job that there's just a lot of need for because it's kind of tedious. But when it's your own work, it's a little bit more rewarding. So how can we set this up to flat it? Well, we need a blank white background. So we've got that. And just so you're really clear, I'm going to have you double click it and call it blank white canvas. So you want a white canvas underneath everything else. 
and you want to lock that so you don't accidentally put anything on that. That's the paper white. Then you want a new blank layer on top of that. This we're going to call our local, or we'll call it our flat local color. So this is our flatting. Think of digital coloring always like a sandwich. This is the most basic sandwich you can have. You have white bread on the bottom. You have your color in the middle. Maybe it's peanut butter and jelly, right? Then you have your black bread on the top. So that's always the way it goes. The, the bread is locked. So my line art is locked, my white is locked. So that means the only layer that I can add stuff to is this flat color layer. So how can I do this? Well, I can just use my paintbrush and click on the, the foreground color and use the color picker and pick a color and then paint with it on my flat color layer. But that has a few problems, right? This is like using markers on a coloring book. Because my black line art is on top, it will always show perfectly. But notice how I'm, I'm not staying in the lines. It's kind of messy. So what's a better way I can do it? Yeah, if I use the magic wand, that selects whole groups of pixels, right? And there's nothing cleaner than a vector to help contain the shape. But if I use a magic wand on the flat color layer, it's just going to select the whole thing. So if I use the magic wand with the paint bucket tool, I can fill in shapes pretty quickly. But here's the thing that hopefully you understand from previous projects, I'll deselect. We want to select with the magic wand from the vector layer. So for instance, I select the body there with the vector layer, and then if I try to use the paint bucket on my vector layer, it won't let me, right? So then I have to move after I've selected, remember you can move selections between layers, to my flat local color, and then drop it in. Whoa. And then I hit deselect, and now I have that all filled in on my flat color layer. Then I can pick another crazy color, because I'm flatting. Makes it easy for the computer to recognize. And I can select this, and then drop it in. Now, remember, the magic wand tool I have contiguous on, it only works if the shape is closed. So if I try that on the tail, which has some openings in it, watch what happens. Pick a crazy color. Oops, I have to go back to the flat color layer. Right. So if it's open, that's no good. So what can I do? Well, I can go on my flat color layer. Ah. deselect and I can use my lasso tool or even better yet go to my vector layer and use my uh, quick selection tool to kind of fill in the rough area we don't use quick selection most of the time because it's pretty inexact but by doing that, it gave me a pretty good selection. And then I can go to my flat color layer and drop it in. Ah, oh, what did it do? See, I hate the quick selection tool. It just selected the line art. So what's another thing I can do? Well, I can take this and I can just use the regular lasso tool or the magnetic lasso tool. And I haven't shown you the magnetic lasso tool, so let me show you that. And I'm on my vector layer. And I'm basically just drawing around my line art. But because it's the magnetic lasso, it's looking for contrasted pixels to stick to. So it will do a pretty good job. 
and it's not going to be limited to all my little whims of movement in my hand. So this is why flatting can be tedious. Some people use the pen tool within Illustrator to get perfect shapes. But if you have vector line work, this does it for you. Ah. Then you just got to close it up. Ah. <laughs> you can see why I don't like this tool very much. You close it up by double clicking near the beginning. And then you can always do Command D to deselect. Man, it was working so well. All right, let me start again. So I'm on the vector layer. I'm using the magnetic lasso tool. I'm going around the outside of it, basically following along with my, my inking. And this is because it's not a closed shape. And then there's another approach I'll show you, which is the one I actually most often use. But I want you to think about this when you're flatting. How to manage your layers to get the shape you need. This is just the first step of coloring. Okay, this is where it got weird last time. I'm trying to close it up. Okay, if you hold down command, then it will automatically give you the close command, and you can do that. Okay, so if I drop this in now on my flat color layer, it will fill it in. And it didn't make any mistakes for the most part, just little things, right, that I can clean up later. So here's the way I usually do it. I think I have an opening in the head here. So what I'll do is I'll make a duplicate of my vector line work. See the duplicate? And then I will rasterize that duplicate. This is just to select from. And then I will just go ahead and use my paintbrush and fill in the gaps. This is just a process step. So by filling in that little gap with some color, then I can use the magic wand select it all, go to my flat color, and not have to trace it. Paste it in. And that's what I do most often. Okay, so I've got some really colorful flatting. I'm going to keep that up. And the other way is you can just do it by hand. And you can just paint with your paintbrush. You can set it to be a nice big hard edge paintbrush. We don't want soft edges. You want to pick pretty bold colors, especially if you don't know what colors you're going to use yet. And you want to be on your flat color layer and just paint behind. But when you're lucky, you can just use your magic wand to speed it up from the vector layer. And remember, you can augment by holding down Shift. And you can add to that magic wand selection. The hardest thing is just switching between layers. And if you have nice contained shapes like these feathers in the wing, it gives me a lot of opportunity to, to get some pretty interesting colors right away. So I'm just using the magic wand, holding down shift, and getting all these outside feathers. Pick an interesting color for them. Go to my flat color layer, drop it in. And you see, even though I selected multiple shapes, I didn't have to do the, the um, paint bucket in each one. It will automatically fill all of the selection at once. Same thing here, magic wand. Let's get this next row of feathers. And the whole point of flatting is not to use the same color anywhere. 